kids on the beat. Juice the God born Trayvon Marquise McCoy on June 17, 1996, was a rapper born and raised in West Seattle, clocking in 800,000 views cumulatively on YouTube and 2.5 million plays on SoundCloud alone at the time of this documentary, Juice forever stamped his place in Seattle music history. Although Juice was from West Seattle, he graduated from Franklin High School just on the other side of the West Seattle Bridge. Juice loved other things aside from music, like basketball and fashion, but it goes without a doubt that he made a name for himself through his unique aggressive but melodic style of rapping. Just like big personalities in the public eye, Juice had also a side of him only shown to those closest to him. These are those people and those stories. I don't want you on your knees. 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 I don't want you on your knees.
This kid's here, motherfucker. Dog. But she done started taking shit down. <laughs> so everything still, like, look at everything. It still smells the same. Yeah, everything. This is all his shit. So, I, I mean, if you, if you guys want to, hey, everything's still the same. So, if you guys want to, what you guys can do is, um, Tata, can, we can um, really quick just all move this stuff really quick because his shoes are still here. Everything's still the same. This is his clothes, we can, you know, his jackets, everything's still in here. This is how he left it. This is exactly how he left it. So. You can look at his jacket and shit if you guys want, but this is all this shit. You know, my mom, they're not getting rid of it. It's, the, you know, a little yellow coat from that little video. This is how he left, everything's how he left it, literally. But yeah, I'll, I'll just do a little, I'll do a little quick tour of it. Yeah, and then here's the bus. We were so... We were so stuck up on these shoes, on these damn glasses right here. I, I bought them from D H Gate. If you guys know what D H Gate is, I do. These <laughs> Did are you know that? these are the food joints right here. But you know, we all went in buffs. So I was like, "Fucking, I'm gonna buy a fake pair." And I just flex on juice. I was like, "Well, I got the buffs now." I took the picture of all that. I had him sitting by my my speakers. Now I, I had him like that sideways. He was going crazy. He was like, "So if you guys seen juice is so icy." This what he had on right here. Okay, we thought them joints was real too. They came all bagged up, China goods. I can show you. I can show you these texts right here too. Like I still got them. Look at the buffs right here. He's sending me. Like, I'm oh, like, you can't take them. Check the catalog. No, no, you can tell that shit straight in Chinese. You know what I mean? What's so good with, with the buffs? Straight buffs. Look, these are the ones you got. You don't want. You didn't want them bad. I try to get them to get these real ones. The bust down buffs right here. Let's take the boxes out too. Yeah, can you oh, I had the wrong coat on, Young Tata. I wanted this coat on. Young Tata, this is Trevon's dog that he get high and the dog be laying on the bed. And Trevon said, Grandma, he done shit in my room. I said, well, you got him high. So this is Pop. Say hi. Say hi, Miss Juice. Oh, right here. This is a mirror. Two fat bitches in a two-door. saying? Out of the production. Come on. You guys got his jewelry? I do. I got his jewelry. Okay. Yeah, I got his wallet, his ID. Uh, I got his Bellevue Community yeah, College, all that. You got his ID? Yeah. All right, man. I know you guys seen these right here. Knock, knock, open up, point the tail to his top. Yeah, he was he was rocking them at first. I and mean, then he turned them to hoops. He was in Liberia. Some of the classic legendary fits from Juice. You got the Fago fit. You know, it's straight from the cool right here. Straight from the cool. South Shore. He faced on me when he was buying this. He was like, should I get it? I told him it was kind of ugly because of this right here, you know? But then it kind of grew on me a little bit. You know, I had to cop me one too. Got mine at the house. Everybody talking about like designer fits and everything, but you don't gotta go, go designer to wear everything. The day we shot Blue Faces, Juice went to Marshall's and bought an outfit. Only person, one person knows is Kashai. Kashai was working, he was like, bro, I need a little fit to wear. Juice went in there, bought the little Marshall jeans from Westwood Village with a tank top. That was it, you know, it ain't really nothing to it or nothing for me. See this right here. Quaker bag. You know, the Juice Forces are real famous around Seattle right now, but the real story behind these, Jabri and Shakir used to rock, make these like 15 years ago when it was little, they used to sit, make painted shoes and painted clothes and then Juice found out about him and he got some made. So when he passed away, we just, we named him, we named him after him because he loved him. He only had one pair, but you see, he was rocking them to death and it was just crazy. And all the songs that Juice was talking about, like all the expensive shoes and Balenciaga, this is what he was talking about. He never showed nobody though, but he got these from Bakari. R.P. Bakari, you know. He came to the house happy one night, like he had the red jacket on with the Supreme goggles from Bakari. He just said, yeah, I got put on, I got put on. They're mad at me, they're mad at me. And he came in with these like, yeah, you know, lagas, but he stopped rocking them after a while. All right, now look, if you go on Juice's Twitter, he got a tweet talking about he, he's in love with Air Forces. You see, just Air Forces piled up. Crispy Coke Whites, he ain't never even cracked open yet, you know? These are all brand new. Look. They're all brand new. They still got the stuff inside of them because he just. Look at this. This guy's crazy. Look. All brand new stuff. Look. This guy had. Yeah, he started going, he started going, <laughs> Bro, he going crazy. He's going to going crazy. Oh. oh my God. He started killing me. This guy, bro. See, this is, this is the market. Oh, yeah, no, these are the 
and things right here. 10.5. He has heat. Literally, he got heat. That's just, that's just a little bit, you know. Yeah, money rag right there. See, look, this. Let me look, show you guys. He got the Hold money up. rag right Hold there. Up. We don't gotta. This is how you know money rags are so real with juice. Look, this, this ain't no joke. And you guys already know. Look, Kush is my cologne. Yes, yeah, swag, my religion. This is not even mine. It's Shakira's, but this is how you know the juice is really money rag rocking. It's already it's already rolled up in this room. Shaquille, Anthony Barquette. Juice, L blood. You know, it's all juicy as well. All these little cards, you feel me? From the school and everything. My name is Michelle Johnson, and Trevon was my son, my grandson, and my man. He was my baby when Trevon was born. I told his dad that that was my baby, but Trevon and I was at Target in Westwood Village, and I was cutting up, and Trevon said, Grandma, why every time you go somewhere, it's a problem? Oh my God, everything. He was ambitious, he was self-centered, he was a go-getter, he just, was Trevon, he was determined, and when he set himself to something, he would go for it. Well, Trevon was, if Trevon was happy, I was happy. If Trevon was sad, I was sad. If Trevon wanted to go get somebody, I had to go get him. Whatever Trevon wanted, I wanted. Trevon texted me the 31st, and he was like, Grandma, I need you to send this insurance card in. Today's the last day. And I said, OK, Trevon, I have it, you know. And uh, he texted me back, and he was like, Grandma, don't forget. And then he FaceTimed me, sitting at a tray with a bib on him. But he was at a woman's house. I said, OK, King. Well, you know, Trevon was my man, my boy, my best friend, my son. Trevon would come in the house, and I'd come in the house, and I'd be like, Trevon, you been smoking weed? And he'd be like, Grandma, I ain't hit no weed, and the whole house is smoky. The dog high, just sitting there like he couldn't move. And, but I remember Trevon always just coming in here sitting at that table eating some cereal, and he'd be high as a schoolgirl's dress. <laughs> oh, but hey, that's Trevon. He couldn't do no wrong in my eyes. Drive down Del Ridge, I'm blasting this. But you know what? He would always come and tell his grandma, put the bottle down. Let Hennessy rest. Grandma be, DJ Bass Kids, hey nigga, you a dog. Bringing me the money. Finesse them out the bread, ain't no leaky crumbs. 
Ay, from left to honey. The steak, it came it with came onions. onions 13 coins, fuck some Benny on his ass. If he wolf and pull up at his mama's uh, kick. Everybody in my family was a dropout. When my pops used to call the leg uh, from the cop's house. Niggas say they chopping, never seen a slap house. If niggas try to press the whole crowd, get maxed out. Pussy niggas on my mama, we don't tap out. Experience the passing of a loved one or an idolized figure, you are left with the memories you've created with that individual alongside their body of work. Juice has touched so many lives both through his music and through his relationships he held. From loving his music to having a front row seat of his upbringing, here are some accounts of memories from those who knew Juice best. Ready? Okay. So, first and foremost, Juice. I never called him that. I've always called him Trevon. Um, Juice kind of, Juice created when he got about 16, really. He started saying, I'm Juice to God. I'm that nigga boy. And you know, I'm just, auntie, I'm like, you're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy. But when I got introduced to Juice, that's when I got to learn who he was, who he really was outside of family. Oh, that was my childhood best friend. There, I have six siblings, but Trevon is like my only sibling. He was the closest one I was close to. Um, we were just, we grew up as brother and sister, three years apart. I literally babysitted him every day. Uh, we lived right across the street from Cam. And I remember we first met him and I brought Trevon outside and Cam was like, he recently wrote me when Trevon passed. And he was like, I remember you was toting him around. You was holding his hand. You was his mom. You was, you know, you was acting like his mother and you took care of him and you shielded him. And I just always, you know, remember you guys growing up together. So we were really close. We were really, really close. I knew about everything. Um, outside of rapping, he was Trevon. Trevi, Kevin, you guys probably didn't know, but most people call him Kevin. Every day he would wake up, literally, eat cereal. He would have boxers on or red shorts on, come downstairs, didn't have no top on. I used to be like, you're hella skinny. And he'd be like, ah, uh, you know, he'd start mumbling, his favorite little mumbling talk, but he was a good kid. Um, he watched my baby for me. My other daughter, he would get off the bus for me. Uh, he would drive my grandmother around. My mom, he would come get my mom. He was just a family guy and no one actually knew it unless you were close to him. A couple months before he died, he had stacks on him, lots of stacks. And I'm like, give me some money. I need some money, you know, break me off something. And I was for sure he was gonna say no, but this nigga took the money out of his pocket and he was like, what you need, I got you. And he literally just gave me hella money for no reason. And he was just a good guy. He was loving his spirit. He always smiled, he never frowned. He hated like arguments, he hated confrontation. There's lots of women, he was the only boy. So we're always cutting up really. And he's like, oh my God, you guys are doing too much. Calm down, we don't need to be like this. And yeah, he was a great kid. And personality was outstanding. Um, the last day I seen Trevon was March 31st. Uh, when I come to my mom's house, we normally talk. Like every day I'm in his room, we're laughing, we're talking shit. He'll come in the living room, we're popping it. But for some reason we didn't talk that day. So I don't, I didn't get to say bye to him. I didn't get to, 
I didn't get to talk to him or anything. He was running from the shower to his room. And I was at the door. And I was like, buy skinny legs. And that's the only thing I said to him. I don't think he heard me. He had his little, that little sponge brush everybody uses to do their hair or whatever the shit was. We didn't, that was it. We didn't talk. We normally talk every day. We normally FaceTime. Literally, I usually FaceTime him at one o'clock in the morning every day. He'll be coming from the north end. I guess there was like some guy out in the north end that did his music. He'll be coming from Amir's house. He'll be getting food. He'll be downtown. And we always talk at one o'clock, but the 31st, him and I, we didn't communicate at all really. It was just like passing. And I just feel like that was God preparing me to preparing his departure away from me. Because like I said, we normally talk. and We didn't talk at all that day. So yeah, it really hurts and I just miss him a lot. And I'm thankful for all the memories that we do have. Shit, man, I'm Mafia D. You know, I come out to Central District and shit, and, uh, you know, me and Juice met a couple times. You know, I didn't really get to, like, sit down and, and, and chop game with him how I wanted to, but, like, as far as the shit that I knew about him, I knew he was solid. I knew he was from where he really said he was from, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the nigga made some dope-ass music, you know, and, and a lot of people may, ain't going to notice, but I, had, I put out a track called uh, Muscle Up, and originally Juice was supposed to be on it, but the timing was fucked up, so we never got to sit down and collab on that. Um, he stood his ground, man. He, he really stood his ground, and um, he didn't, he, he never looked for no handout. Like, he, he, he wasn't, he didn't strike me as one of them dudes that'll like sell out, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and when he got on, like, stop, stop, stop rocking with the, the folks, the people who, who, who helped him get to where he was. That's, that's what really stood out to me about him the most. So yeah, when 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 all that had took place, when it went down, I was I was hella shocked. You know what I'm saying? Because I was you know seeing his posts and you know seeing some of the things he was talking about, and um, he he was hella like upset. He was he he, he wasn't feeling the city about how that he felt like they was blackballing him and uh, they wasn't showing him love. You know what I'm saying? And it seemed like right when he passed, it seemed like everything that he was pissed about, everything he was mad about, was starting to happen. You know what I'm saying? The goals that he wanted to reach, as far as like within the city he achieved them but he achieved them after he passed so you know what i'm saying that that kind of fucked me up because it's like i don't want to see that happen to nobody else out here like you know what i'm saying like that's that's a talent that was going to waste and it wasn't necessarily his fault at the same time you know what i'm saying so it affected me a lot man i started looking into my own life and he's a part of the reason why like i moved the way i do like i don't i don't after I do shows, I don't stay, you know what I'm saying? Like, and when you're doing this stuff and, and, and you got people who's believing in you and you got people who want to see you work and people who want to see you go far, you know what I'm saying? You got to look at yourself as valuable, you know what I'm saying? So I know I'm a value to a lot of people who love me. And it's like, you can't, you, you got to start moving a certain way, you know what I'm saying? Or, or that type of stuff can happen, you know what I'm saying? So after shows and, and things like that, I, I I look at Juice and what happened to him and I, and I move different. I get up out of there, like, you know what I'm saying? When I'm near, we can mingle, mix and mingle, but as soon as I get off stage, I'm gone, you know, I'm, I'm back to I'm back to the fam, I'm back to home base. That nigga was hard, bro. One of the hottest niggas out here in Seattle, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Amir, shout out Shakir, man, for keeping your name alive, bro. Them niggas is really doing it for you, bro, and uh, I admire that shit. I hope uh, when I go that I can get some niggas to back me just like that, so, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Juice, nigga, RP. Uh, Glenn Brooks, we, we, we're like family friends, we call each other cousins and stuff like that. It's like a little brother to me at the end of the day. Like I say, I knew him growing up from when he was little till he got older and, and became Juice the Guy. He was Trayvon McCoy before then, but we all know him now as Juice the Guy. Uh, the first time I heard his music, the song that really got me on him was the Free G. He played me that in, in a car and I was like, man, this is it. You know, I thought he, you know. At first when he was going back and forth between the hooping and the music, I didn't really think it was a good idea because it's hard to mix those two and be focused on that hoop-wise, school-wise, and rap. So I, I always didn't think that he would be able to make enough time to do all, all of those in one. If you know him, you know he'll figure it out the best way he can possible, so. Man, I just seeing his progression from going to back and forth with he's in the music to he's going to school to he's out the music and all that, just his progression of him getting his life together before him passing away. It started kind of to click for him and me seeing him every day and all that and just talking to him and hearing what he was saying and you know what I'm saying, trying to get in his head and think like, man, is he doing the right thing and all that. And I seen the progression he was making to become a better person, rapper, basketball player, student and all that, uh, all around grown man that he was becoming. 
So, like, I just like the progression that I've seen, having them talks with him and stuff like that. I mean, he's one of those guys where, where you know, like, people say they want to do something, or they want to be great at this, they want to be great at that, and they let somebody else tell them that they can't. One thing about him was it don't matter family, friend, whatever. When his mind is made up, he's going. he thinks that he's going to do what he set out to do, and that's one thing that I like about him. More people should be like that, aspire to do things, and, you know, once they put their mind to it, just to stick to it. Like Nipsey said, one thing about him is he didn't quit. And one thing about Juice was the same thing. He said he was going to do this, and that's what his whole goal and mission was. So that's what he was really trying to do every day to get to that point. Uh, his passion affected me. It was tough. Like I said, um, going back, we was together a lot before he passed, and, you know, hanging out every day, coming to my job, picking me up from work, playing basketball together, talking about his music, about his life, what he wanted to do, his goals and aspirations. That really set in with me a lot. And, I know where he was headed, and I feel like he never got to reach his peak. His life was cut short before he can even get to the things that he wanted to do in life and make his real impact on life. I feel like he never got the opportunity, so it really hurt me the most because see, to see the potential he was, he had and what he was getting ready to do with his life and all that, so it just, it's just tough seeing one of somebody you know growing up as a little kid to a grown man, and you see this, the change starting to happen in him, and then at the end of the day, he gets cut short like that. One minute you're talking to him, and the next minute he's gone. So. That was the hardest thing for me, to, to swallow that I would never be able to see him or hear his voice again or talk shit to him or one-on-one -on -one basketball and all that. Like, it's still, you know, it don't sit well with me today, but at the end of the day, I'm coping with it the best way I can. Uh, man, just any last words is that I love you, Cuddy, and, you know, keep smiling down on all of us and your name is, you know, they're doing a great job of keeping your name going and keeping your mission alive. So, at the end of the day, you pick the right guys to run it around you. And like I said, I always told you that and you always told me that. So, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't have no regrets. Some people, you know, you ask God why things happen and all that. You don't really have the answers to it. It's kind of like, you don't, you really don't want to put no stipulations on it. But, you know, things happen that you don't have no control over. So, you got to do what you got to do. So. Oh my god, look at that type of taxes. Aye, 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 aye,
Y'all yeah, see the change though. Big ice, you know. Keep it right there. Big Three, ice, you know. Two, one, stay still. Yitri. He said yitri. Copy change, so I cast on some jewels. Niggas hate to see me win. Niggas pray to see me lose. Came up for us. Oh, shit, I my Come on, keep going. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Walk towards me. Uh, Alright, right there, right there. 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 Hey, hey, Rich, hey, Rich. Hey, yeah, go, go, go. I'm weak, bro. See me? Get that, yeah, yeah, get that. They don't, they don't know it's coming, man. Three, two, one. Yeah, they don't stop, yeah. Oh, man, we oh, should have been a lot. I got I got got I got this. I got I got 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 I want to touch the screen, bro. I'm nice on that bus. Remember, I was selling it. Couldn't even pay my bill. My bitch mom pay that shit. You don't know how it feel to be down on your dick. All the scammers for them, bro. But the judge again, wrist. 10 racks off the bitch. I've been swerving in these boots. Bunches on the whip. My bitch smuggling with your boots. Bitch, I'm feeling with the club. I got cookies. I got glue. Fuck. I'm a big gun. Powder what I took. Throw you cash inside these joggies. 5K what I just blew. 200 on the plate. 550 for the shit. 50 S's on the piece. 50 drum was taking this. This a trophy of my grind. All them nights was taking risks. I was, was that nigga when I wasn't touch the strips. Long it's on that bus. Remember I was selling it. Couldn't even pay my bill. My bitch mom pay that shit. But you, how it feel to be down on your dick? Started scamming for the blues. Fuck the judge, I'm getting rich. Ten racks off the bitch. I been swerving in these coats. Dark tents on the wet. Might be swerving with your boo. Hell, I'm friendly with the plug. I got cookies, I got glue. You a pup? I'm a pig. Gunpowder, what I chew. Three inside these doggies. Five K, what I just blew. Two hundred for the play. Five fifty for the shoes. Call me chain, so I cast on some jewels. Niggas hate to see me win. Suckers pray they see me lose. Came up for hustle. No luck, my nigga. Never got robbed. Big body. I bless my nigga. Put my faith in the guy. I don't trust no niggas. Get to set you up. Get you touched on niggas. Mm. But hey, I'll risk it. Hey, bitch, this is heat, bitch. No, this is heat, bitch. Real deal heat, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what? You feel me, nigga? He said, no, bitch. Real deal heat, bitch. All right. Cool. Don't say that. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna hit you in a second, though. I'm about to uh, step outside and just stay with me. <laughs> and, then and then smoke that, pass it, do all that. You guys can chop it up, too. I want to get, like, natural shit. Your legacy isn't defined by material things. Once you're gone in the physical world, the way you will be remembered is how you treated people, how you dealt with certain situations, and what impact you had on your loved ones and the others around you.
People will remember what you've accomplished and how you contributed to making this world a better place. One of Juice's closest friends, Amir, recalled an email he got from Juice where Juice wrote a paragraph about how he viewed his life was at the time. I believe my God gave me a special talent. That talent is to inspire those who lack self-motivation. The gift in itself isn't just one talent in specific, but more so the energy, effort, and love I put forth into the things I learned to care the most about, such as basketball and music. For example, I remember the first time I expressed my feelings and aspirations towards music to my best friend and mentor. When I told them that I was going to pursue this music thing, they laughed and told me, you have the whole package, you have the potential to be something, but first ask yourself if you're going to actually go through with that dream. At that moment, I realized I wouldn't short myself. I stored those exact words in my head. I made it a daily routine for me to put my all into my dream of being in the music industry, just let alone doing something positive and showing the kids from my generation that you could actually make something of yourself if you just tried. The next couple of weeks, I worked and saved up for a $350 3000X microphone. Determined, I took the microphone and hung it from a mic stand in my closet. At the time, I was 18 years of age. And this being my first time speaking my saturated thoughts into the microphone, I had let doubt creep into my head. Quickly, I dropped that thought like a bad habit. Song after song, mixtape after mixtape, I started to fall in love with the process. I realized the power I had and came to grips of what my purpose was or might be in this world. I always had a voice and I always had a following, but what I was lacking was an outlet to be heard or seen on. When I realized music could be that missing outlet, I went in full force with pursuing the dream of being a rapper, or in my eyes, becoming a somebody. A person of morals, a role model, a positive person who could just be motivation to people like me. People who came from the same struggle and the same background. So for months, I busted my ass in the studio making and perfecting my craft. In those months, I spent over $5,000 on studio time, videos, and my craft as an artist in general. I've went nights without sleep, days without meals, that's because I was determined to prove everyone who doubted me and I wanted to make a statement when the time was right. The point I wanted to prove and those looking up to me and admiring me was, and still is, that anything can be achieved if you just put your mind and heart into it. All those nights I spent in the studio, all the days I went without eating, all the things I sacrificed for my dream all started to come along. Those same people who laugh or doubted me now pay respects to me for what I do. The people I aim to inspire now hear me. The people who I wanted to show anything is possible now believe in themselves, all because of me, all because of the hard work I put into myself. That's my talent, making others believe in their own.